In this video, I will talk about the basic channel capacity behaviors. And the channel that is of interest to us is the so-called passband channel. So we have a carry frequency F, and we have a bandwidth centered around that one called B. And the bandwidth is much smaller than the carry frequency. So for example, we might communicate at the 3 gigahertz frequency with a bandwidth of 10 megahertz. And when you have a bandwidth B, then you can represent the continuous time signal with two B samplers per second. And a real signal will be real valued, so these are two B real samplers per second. However, the communication theory should not be dependent on which frequency F we are using. For that reason, we usually take the bandwidth and we move it down centered around the zero frequency. That is what we call the baseband. And in the baseband, bandwidth decreases. So since we are centering it around the zero frequency and the bandwidth should count in as the distance between zero and the larger frequency, we only have a B over two bandwidth now. However, the signal will be complex valued because real valued signals needs to have uh, something in the frequency domain that is symmetric around zero, which is not the case here anymore. So we have a signal with half of the bandwidth, but it's complex valued. So no information is actually disappearing. Traditionally, these samples is a way of representing a continuous time signal perfectly in discrete time. However, in digital communication, we do the opposite. So these samples is what we call the modulation symbols. This is where we put our information and then based on that, we are generating continuous time signal with the bandwidth that we are allowed to use. We send the signal over the channel, we take samples at the receiver, and that is where we get back to discrete time and use only such models in digital communications. We will now consider the case with the received signal, which is a sample, y, is the transmitted signal, x, multiplied with the square root of beta, which is the channel gain, plus noise that has a variance n naught. For this channel, the channel capacity is given by log 2 of 1 plus the signal to noise ratio. And the signal to noise ratio is the energy per symbol, Q, multiplied with the channel gain beta divided by the noise variance and not. And this is then the channel capacity measured in bits per symbol. But how many symbols do we have per second? We have B complex symbols per second. So we can multiply this whole expression by B and instead get something that is measured in bits per second. In addition, q is equal to a power p measured in watt divided by b, which was the number of symbols per second. And we put that into the expression. We now have a new expression for the capacity, which is equivalent to the previous one. And it's the bandwidth b multiplied with log 2 of 1 plus the scene to noise ratio, now written as the power p multiplied with the channel gain beta divided by the bandwidth times the noise variance and not. How does the capacity change when we are changing the bandwidth and the power, which are two variables that we actually can select in real systems? To understand that, let's first look at the power and consider what, how the log 2 of 1 plus the SNR behaves. So let's write that as log 2 of 1 plus set. And if set is a small number, then log 1 plus set can be written as log 2 of Euler's number E multiplied with set. So it's something that grows linearly when set is small. However, instead, when we have a large value of set, log 2 of 1 plus set will behave as log 2 of set. So it will grow in a logarithmic way, which is a slow way of growing. So therefore, we can expect a fast growth when we have a small SNR and a slow growth when we have a high SNR. And SNR is something proportional to the power p, so we get this type of behaviors. At low SNR, the capacity grows almost linearly with the power. So it pays off a lot to increase the power. While at high SNR, increasing the power further when we already have a high SNR will make a very small difference. We can see this behavior in this graph where on the horizontal axis we have the transmit power and on the vertical axis we have the channel capacity. And we see that as we increase the power, we get a higher and higher capacity. However, when we have a low SNR, we see that the growth rate is almost linear, and then it starts to decay the growth rate and we have more logarithmic behavior at high SNR. So that is what also the theory was supporting. We get almost the opposite behavior when changing the bandwidth because the SNR is now proportional to one over the bandwidth. So when we have a small bandwidth, we get a high SNR. 
And in that case, log 1 plus SNR will be very little affected by changing the SNR. So changing the bandwidth have almost no impact on that part of the expression. However, in front of the logarithm, we have the bandwidth multiplied, which means that in these cases, we will see that when we have a small bandwidth, using more bandwidth will almost linearly increase our capacity. So that pays off a lot. However, when we already have a high bandwidth, we will be at low SNR. Then we can apply this approximation of the logarithm again. And in that case, actually, the bandwidth is cancelling out, which means that as we let the bandwidth approach infinity, we will approach a limit, which is p times beta divided by n naught, multiplied with log 2 of the Euler's number. So that is the limit, and it pays off very little to add bandwidth beyond a certain point. That is illustrated in this graph here, where we now are changing the bandwidth on the horizontal axis, and we have the channel capacity on the vertical one. And we see that when we have a little bandwidth, so we are at high SNR, then the capacity is growing very, very quickly with the bandwidth. However, when we already have a lot of bandwidth, we see that the capacity grows slower and slower and approaches the asymptotic limit. In these cases, it doesn't pay off much to add more bandwidth. So in summary, what can we say about the capacity behavior? Well, it depends on if we are in low or high SNR regions. So at low SNR, the capacity grows very quickly when we are changing the power. That's why we call it the power limited region. And we observe an almost linear growth rate as we change the power. So that is what we should do to improve capacity. If we are instead at high SNR, we have a lack of bandwidth. We are in the bandwidth limited region. And we see that because the capacity grows almost linearly when we increase the bandwidth. So that is what we should try to get in order to improve the capacity. In the next video, we will also look at ways of changing the SNA by using multiple antennas in our system.